record is 151 and 2, set by TK Skipper at Los Alamitos. The Parpano track record is Dare You To, set just two weeks ago, 151 and 4. Here's an update on the odds, with Top Notcher getting the most play at 1 to 2, meaning if you bet $2, you get back 3. Not much of an investment no, there. Dare You To is side. 3 to 1, the, the second Reaching choice. Close, what a night this could be for Doug Brown. Two wins and two outings here. Town Pro and Top Notcher. He won't tell you much about it, but I'm sure he's feeling it right now. Let's go up to one of the top track announcers in all of North America, whether you're talking standard breads or thoroughbreds, Tom Durkin. Top notcher, of course, heavily favored here, and big money on the line if he wins. Not bad money if you finish second, 68,000, and even a good night's work, even if you finish fifth in this race, $13,600. Gate picking up speed, and uh, they're off. And from the middle of the pack, Hayes, fella. Driven hard early to get the early lead. On the outside, Top Notcher has come out second. He's driving hard, three wide going into the third. Down inside, Sandman Hanover is there, racing in third position now. Two and a half lengths back to Mystery Fund, who's now fourth. Dare You Two is under a hard hold by Jack Moiseev. Racing now about six lengths off the lead. The field now coming into the lane for the first time. Top Notcher's in gear. A sizzling opening quarter of 27 and one fifth seconds. Passing is now for the first time. Top Dutcher taking command. Base fella has yielded the lead. That man, Hanover, is racing out third. Off the rail, Mystery Fund is now fourth. Here you two right at his heel. Line one down on the inside, followed by Pilgrim's Patriot. Storm Compensation trails the field as they round the second turn. As Top Notcher dictates a strong pace, and the base fella is now second, 56 and 2 for the half mile. Bit of a breather there for Top Notcher, who leads the way into the wind and down the back stretch. Mystery Fund edging closer on the outside. For the inside base, fella third. Dare you two. A good second over trip. He's only three lengths off the lead of Top Notcher. Down on the inside, Sandman Hanover. Nowhere to go. Storm Compensation is launching a three wide bid from the back of the pack. Then Pilgrim's Patriots in between horses. And down on the inside, line one. Three quarters in one, 24 and three. And the field coming to the top of the stretch here in the Breeders' Crown, and Top Notcher still in charge. Dare You Two is forced to go three wide into the lead. Top Notcher in front and driving hard, holding on to the lead. Base Villa attacks on the outside. Top Notcher still there. pace in the final surges and scores a 60 to 1 upset here over heavily favored top notcher well i'll tell you that's not a par that's an eagle scored by base fella a 60 to 1 long shot on the board the five-year-old by brand new fella out of the tarboy mare basin bay roaring from behind to defeat top notcher and we have our first upset of the night Indeed, our first upset of the night, Bruce, and a 152 and one new personal best for a Bayes fella who was used pretty well in that first quarter mile there in 27 and one. And uh, of course, they moved him right away from the gate, try to get a girl, good early spot. That's exactly what happened. And Bayes fella had enough kick in the final strides to get up and beat a very tough top notcher. All the credit in the world to Bayes fella. And Bayes fella driven to victory tonight by. A name that you probably don't know all that well, Paul McDonnell, who is an up-and-coming driver on the tough Canadian circuit. And he gets the tote board, the longest price in the history of seven years of Breeders' Crown competition, $140.60. Went off at 69 to 1 or thereabout. 1160 returning for the place, 360 to show. Top notch your second, the heavy favorite, 280 and 220. Sandman Hanover was third, two dollars and eighty cents. At the time of the mile, 152 and one. Let's go to John Pavlock. Well, you know that the favorites couldn't last here, and Paul McDonnell driving in his very first Breeders' Crown gets the job done. This young man is uh, is trembling a little bit. I don't know if the excitement has really set in. How old are you, Paul? Uh, 27. 27. What were you doing when you were 27? Perhaps not winning the Breeders' Crown. All right, let's talk about the race. You had some good gate speed with your horse. Yeah, he's very fast off the gate, and I just hope that uh, he can get there first before the turn. From a, you know, we talk. There's such a thing in this uh, business as a perfect trip. 
in behind a fast pace setter, and that's what you had tonight. Take nothing away from your horse. That's true. Uh, that's the trip that I wanted, uh, top notcher. He's, he was sure the horse to beat, and uh, I thought if I could get a good two-hole trip in behind him, uh, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, 124 and three down to the three quarters. You're pacing into unknown territory, and Dougie's working on his colt. You had to feel pretty good. Yeah, uh, that horse of mine, he just breezes along and, and paces so easy, and uh, 124 and three, uh, he, he was still on the bit all the way. Thank you very much, Paul McDonough. Let's get